Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, we are going to talk about a very important topic, how to expose columns into Pega tables. So first question, why do we need to expose database table columns? As you can see in the picture, this represents the PY work page or the case data. And we already saw during the data model lecture that case data can be persisted at different levels. It can be directly as a top level property in the PY work page or it can be also embedded property under the customer details like a page list, page group or page. And we also know that Pega uses database table to save all the work instances, but not all properties are exposed into the database table. Most probably the top level properties which are directly on the PY work page can be easily exposed and all other embedded data are not exposed, but those are saved as an instance into the database table that is achieved via blob. Blob stands for binary large object. So what that blob column actually contains is all these case details are compressed and then saved into the blob column. So during the update, all the data gets compressed and stored into the blob column. And when you want to access the data, when you open the case, all these details can be decompressed and then displayed to the end users. So this compressing and decompressing, we use some Java PL functions. For example, you might have seen PR read from stream, which helps to read the data from the blob. And reading the data from the blob is always expensive. As you can see that there is a compression and decompression happening, especially when you use some kind of reporting and you want to report on some columns that are not exposed, then it is going to be a huge performance issue. That is why Pega always recommends to have the columns exposed into the database table if you want to use reporting. And especially in the report definition columns, if you have unexposed columns, then Pega will add some kind of warning to that saying that if for a better performance, you need to expose the columns. And I would recommend whenever you see this issue, make sure that you expose the columns so that you will not have any kind of performance issue in production. So how do we expose these database table columns? In Pega, there are three ways through which you can expose database table columns. First is the optimization wizard. You can open any property and then you can use the optimization wizard which helps with exposing this property into different tables if possible or you can expose it directly into the work table. This is one way. The second method is you can use the database modify wizard through which you can also modify the database table. Just make sure that you have the right privilege or right access role when you want to use these kind of database administration. And third, the final option is you can also manually expose it by manually creating a column into the database table and then manually creating a database table instance and then making a connection. So in this video, I'm going to show you all three ways. I'm going to expose three properties which are embedded at different levels and then you will rightly understand how to easily expose properties. Let's go to Disney Studio and check it out. In the previous lectures, we saw that all properties under the case gets exposed to columns in the work table. Let's check the work table. PC A Life Climbs Up Work is our work table. If you scroll down, you'll find Pega already exposed few properties that were created in the case designer view. These are all top level single value properties. When you want to check some property data in the case, which are not exposed, Pega will first decompress the entire data from the blob storage and then retrieves the data. This will definitely have an impact on the performance. The performance will be severe when you report on cases with unexposed columns. By default, single value properties that are part of these embedded pages will be decompressed and stored in the blob. Those are not exposed, but you can always expose any single level properties either at the top level or at the embedded level. In the climbs case, let's say the customer ID, which is part of customer details, policy number, which is part of policy details, and the case owner, which is at the top level, all these three properties are used extensively by the reports and this needs to be exposed. Currently in the work table, none of the column is exposed. So when we use this in reports, it is making a huge performance impact. So it's our job to expose all these properties. So what are the ways to expose a column? There are currently three ways to do it. Let's look briefly at each of the three ways. First is optimization wizard. Optimization wizard can help to optimize either a top level single value property can also be used for embedded properties. 
they can also perform the column population job about column population job we'll see it briefly in the next lecture next option is database modify wizard database modify wizard can be used only for the single value top level properties which are directly at the poi work page level it cannot be used for embedded properties and cannot also do column population job at the time of modifying the database instead you can also use some other reindex activity and then the manual column creation this is like totally manual you can create a column in the database then you can also have the mapping specified in the class rule form then you can save both the class as well as the database table instance so that will do the mapping since we need to expose three properties we will use each of the properties using each of the method now we will start with exposing the property using the optimization wizard login into pega designer studio open the data model properties and look out the records there are two kind of properties or single values it can be at the top level and it can be at the embedded level and with optimization wizard we can expose the properties which are present at the top level as well as at the embedded level now i'm just going to open a property at the top level let's say case owner case owner is at the top level of this class now if you try to optimize this how to optimize this go to actions from here you have a navigation optimize for reporting use this option that will open up the optimization wizard as you can see from here this property can be exposed under the class a life climbs up work climb request so this is the applies to class of this property now let's check about the embedded property in the data model design we used customer details as a page property that can embed the a life data customer details so customer id will come under the customer details let's open the customer id and try to optimize it if we click on optimizing then you get an error saying that you cannot perform optimization because a life data customer is abstract ideally i want to expose this column into climbs request class i don't want to expose it under customer because it's already an abstract class how the pega optimization wizard works is whenever you open a property and try to optimize pega uses this class intelligently assuming that we are going to expose the property under this class so that is why case owner optimization it uses this class and with customer id it uses the data class so we want to tell pega that we are to use the context of climbs request and not the customer there is a small trick go to app explorer then under climbs request open the property and from here if you navigate to the customer details and then you go to the customer id and don't open the property just right click from here and use the optimize for reporting now this will open up the optimization wizard and it will use the context of the climbs request class it doesn't use the context of the data customer class but instead it uses the right context this is how you can expose a embedded property using the optimization wizard just open it from the app explorer right click and then start the wizard now if you look at the wizard there you see we are going to create a new column and map the customer details dot customer id into that column and this column will be exposed as varchar 256 so why this 256 if you open the property and move to advanced tab we already specified a max length of 256 that is why the data type has a length of 256 if you want to change it we have to change in the advanced tab and the applies to class we already know this is under climbs request context so this is going to be the applies to class population you can also schedule the column population either now or later detailed explanation of column population we will see in the next lecture let's proceed next and this gives a review screen saying that what are the classes that will be impacted so this is only one class that's going to be climbs request class and this is the table and the database now you can click next so this will kick start the optimization as you can see optimization started successfully in the following classes a background thread is started that is going to populate your column now if you go to database and then refresh the table just right click from here and do a refresh you see the column number is increased from 94 to 95 and definitely you will find a column here customer id underscore 1 usually whenever you expose any embedded property you get this underscore numbers okay now the main thing is here the column name is customer id which is not the same as the embedded property name so where does this mapping takes place open the class rule form go to sysadmin and then open class 
climbs records here if you go to external mapping tab there you will find the mapping so this is the property customer details dot customer id which is the embedded property that is mapped to the column name customer id underscore one so whenever a property name and column name are different you should explicitly specify it in the external mapping tab now create a new climbs request and i'm providing the customer id as frame one two three four five six click submit now this customer id should be captured under the right column in the work table the py id is c3004 use a query tool to write the query i wrote the query and just executed it you can see that this query returns me the right result prime hyphen 123456 which is the customer id that is stored under the embedded property and we have exposed it into a dedicated column and now the dedicated column holds the value when i want to report now i can just use this column name and easily it can be reported now this is one way the next way is you can use the database modify wizard but remember that it can be used only for the single value top level properties and we cannot use the column population job let's go and expose a property i'm going to use case owner here it is a top level property to use the database modify wizard you have to go to configure sysadmin database and then modify schema this opens up a wizard this is a six step wizard so let's first select the database here it's going to be pega data click next the table is going to be climbs up work next there are 95 columns in the table and there are 105 properties so 10 properties can be exposed to the columns just open this property from here there you will find the properties that are eligible to be exposed and you don't find the case owner main reason is you have to document the property saying that it is required to be optimized go to case owner property go to advanced tab and from here you have an option column inclusion make it record do a checkout whenever you do a change first do a checkout and check in but even if you do the change and then do a checkout checking that will also going to work so what i did is i changed this properties column inclusion to record now pega will understand that this property needs to be exposed you can find the property under the modify schema wizard to do that i'm going to just refresh from here and then start it all over again pega data table climbs up work and you see now climbs request has 107 properties click on this one now you will find the property case owner so select this property and then you can have two options you can either generate code sql code so that you can execute it outside of this pega design studio or you can also generate the database columns so to do that you have to provide a right privilege here as you can see we have successfully created a new column case owner of varchar type 256 and here you don't get an option to do the column population job just what we did during the optimization wizard now let's go to the postgres console and then refresh the table you see a column is increased as 96 and then case owner you can find it this is a top level property and so you don't find any kind of appended uh, one or two okay now we have exposed two properties customer id case owner the last property is policy number which is again embedded under policy details this is going to be a manual column creation and so we have to do some manual steps for mapping first step is go to the database if you have the right privilege to create column you can go here right click on it go to create and then column let's call the column name as policy number and data type can be character varying i'm going to give the size as 256 and then save now we have created a new column here and we know how the mapping takes place this is an embedded property so property name is different from the column name so definitely you have to do the mapping from the class open the climbs records class and from here you have to specify policy details dot policy number and the column name is policy number you can also specify and the column name is policy number now the mapping is done do a save always whenever you manually create or manually do some changes for your database table you have to first save the class instance 
and also you should always save the database table instance because when you do some changes in the table then you should resave it so that the changes are applied into your pegas engine go to sysadmin database table if you forget it you may end up in error so this is a main thing only thing is when you do it manually when you do it in a automated way pega will automatically take care of saving these two instances that is applicable even during the deployment step when you want to deploy some column changes or sql changes and when a class is committed then it's like you just need to resave now go ahead and do a save so for manual creation i did four steps first step I created a new column here manually policy number then I came to the class instance before saving the instance I added the mapping external mapping and then I did a save final step you need to also save the database table instance now everything is perfect let's create a new case I'm going to say customer ID as 1234 and uh, policy number also I'm going to just name it 1234 click submit now this is the case c3005 let's check this case c3005 customer id policy number and case owner you see same customer id policy number is also mapped and case owner is my name so now we saw all three different ways of exposing database table columns and i would recommend you to use the optimization wizard which can help with exposing as well as the column population in the next video i'm going to talk about this column population see you in the next video